Alright Mr. Mussolini, we've lined up some planes, and we need you to choose which ones will equip the Italian Air Force so that we can win the war. Got it, let's see them. Alright, so first up we have the Fiat CR-42, a great biplane, but it's based off a design from the early 1930s and will get absolutely wrecked by the modern monoplanes of our enemies and will be a general symbol of our Air Force's ineffectiveness. Great! I love it! These will be the backbone of our fleet. Wait, did you hear a thing I just said? <sighs> Never mind. Alright, next up is the Machi C-202, a fantastic plane. It's fast, has a great turning radius, and is even better than the German ME-109. Hmm. Alright, I like this one, but let's make sure the guns on it are absolute garbage so that they jam all the time and aren't strong enough to destroy an aircraft quickly. Also, make sure it has lots of problems, which we won't fix. But, sir, I don't think that's a good idea. Do I pay you to think, Luigi? You don't pay me at all, sir. You're holding my family hostage and threatening to- Alright, alright, you've made your point. Show me the other planes. Well, sir, the next two planes are experimental, but we thought we'd show them to you anyways. This first one here has a revolutionary new engine called a jet. This could really give us the upper hand if we- <gasps> What is that? Well, sir, that's just a prototype. It's called the Pastolini 1000. W what's it made out of? Uh, pasta, sir. It runs on olive oil, and the gun barrels are large penne noodles. They shoot garlic cloves, sir. Pasta runs on olive oil, large penne noodles, garlic cloves. Mr. Mussolini? Did you want to order this one, sir? Yes. Okay, how many? Yes. What the heck is that? Mamma mia! Though we may get a bit bent from time to time, we shall never be beaten. World War II saw many technological advances, one of the most famous being the development of the jet engine. The idea of a jet-powered aircraft was not a new one at the outbreak of war. In fact, it was an RAF officer who had first begun designing the jet engine in 1930. Frank Whittle spent years developing this revolutionary new engine design, which sucked in air and combusted it, providing thrust that could outdo the normal piston engines of the day, which had almost reached their maximum power. At the outbreak of the Second World War, both sides rushed to develop jet aircraft to gain a leg up on the enemy. Unbeknownst to the British, the Germans had also began developing a turbojet engine before the war, and actually flew the world's first fully jet-powered aircraft a few days before the war. The Heinkel 178 was a milestone in aviation, but further development was needed to turn jets into fighter aircraft. Many of the major countries in World War II raced to build jets. However, only two countries would build jets that would see combat in the war. Germany holds the distinction for developing the most jets to enter production, having three different jets in service during the war. The most famous was the ME-262, the world's first operational jet. The 262 saw service in Europe against American bomber formations, however, it was entered into service too late to make a significant difference in the war. Germany also produced the Heinkel 162, a less successful jet fighter, as well as the Arado 234 Blitz, the only jet bomber of the war. The British were the only Allied nation to use jets in combat during the war, using the Gloucester Meteor for ground attack rolls and interception. For a first generation jet, the Meteor proved to be an excellent aircraft, but was phased out by the development of newer jets after the war. Nevertheless, the Meteor saw service into the 1970s, and two still fly today for testing purposes. The Americans had also scrambled to produce jets during the war, leading to the Bell P-59. However, the P-59 was a failure and only saw use as a trainer and test bed during the war. 
The Soviet Union and Japan had also been working on jets, with the Japanese making a handful of prototypes of a jet fighter. However, there was another country that developed jets during the war which is largely forgotten by many. Italy. During the war, Italy's air force wasn't exactly recognized as a mighty fighting force. Although they did possess a good number of aircraft, many were old designs and were simply outclassed by their allied counterparts. Italy even sent a few fighter and bomber squadrons to fight in the Battle of Britain. However, many of the fighters were obsolete CR-42 biplanes painted in bright yellow desert camouflage, and the much slower Italian aircraft were easy prey for RAF Spitfires and Hurricanes. This, however, isn't to say that Italy's air force was completely incompetent. Italy produced some fantastic fighters during the war. However, overall, the Italians were simply outmatched by the Royal Air Force and U.S. Army Air Corps. So it may come as a surprise to many that Italy not only developed and built jet aircraft during the war, but they were actually one of the first to do so. In fact, because the German Heinkel 178 was developed in secret, the world believed that the Italians were the first to achieve jet flight at the time. The Italian company Comproni, I hope I'm saying that right, had first begun developing the jet in 1931 as both a means of power for aircraft and for boats. They built a prototype jet boat to show the Italian Navy, who basically said, Look man, this is a great idea, but we're not going to buy it. And you can't sell it to anyone else. However, the Italian Air Force found the concept more interesting, and funded Camproni to build two prototypes. The result was the Caproni Capini N1, a two-seater jet aircraft. It made its maiden flight in August 1940, becoming the first jet-powered aircraft flight ever. Unlike the Germans and British, the Italians didn't use turbojet engines, but instead the N1 had a motor jet, which essentially was a combination of a turbojet and a piston engine. It compressed and combusted air like a turbojet, but the compressor was powered by a piston, meaning it wasn't as powerful as a pure turbojet. Nevertheless, the Italians gained recognition as being the first to achieve jet-powered flight uh, until the Germans revealed that they had done the same thing exactly a year earlier. It's important to note that the N1 was not a fighter aircraft, but it was a prototype to test the viability of jet engines. Unfortunately for Caproni, the jet had neither the speed nor the performance promised by jets. In fact, it was slower than Italy's conventional piston fighters. The N1 also suffered from many other issues, such as a really hot engine which forced the pilots to always fly with an open cockpit. Test flights continued until 1943, and Caproni even began to develop a jet fighter from the research and experience gained from the N1. However, the Allied invasion of Italy took place before such an aircraft could be produced, and ended the Italian jet program. Although it never became anything more than experimental, the N1 is nevertheless an important and almost forgotten piece of aviation history. It served as a source of national pride for wartime Italy, performing flyovers at parades. One of the two N1 prototypes even still survives today at the Italian Air Force Museum. Although the N1 was one of the first jet-powered aircraft in the world, the motor jet which it used was considered by many to be a dead end. Ultimately, the more powerful turbojets would be used to equip the first generation of fighter jets. The Italians were ultimately defeated in World War II, and after the war the British took one of the prototypes for testing and evaluation, although no one knows what eventually happened to this particular aircraft. As for the Italians, they would not operate another jet until 1952, when their air force acquired American F-84 Thunder jets. The story of Italy's jet fighters did not end with the war, however. In 1958, Italy produced the Fiat G-91 fighter, an Italian-built and designed fighter jet aircraft. The G-91 would go on to serve with Italy until 1995. Today, the Italian Air Force operates the AMX attack aircraft, which is the product of a joint Italian-Brazilian venture. As for Caproni themselves, they would go on to merge with a company which today is known as the helicopter manufacturer Augusta Westland.